join me as I heatproof my home on a budget. I'm using a thermal imaging camera that connects to my phone to help point out areas in my house that could do with improvement. And I've also been using a smart thermostat to keep an eye on the heat being lost in my living room throughout the day over the past week. It's currently so cold in the UK. I'm sat in my living room at the moment with a cuppa and it's showing that it's under 14 degrees in here. I live in a pretty typical two up, two down property mid terrace and I tend to have my heating on for two hours in the morning and then it comes back on around six o'clock for another two hours or three hours. So what I want to do is try and heat proof it as much as possible so that hopefully I can either have my heating on for slightly less or just move around the timings a little bit. First off, I've always felt a breeze under my front and back door. So I'm going to start there. Straight away, you can see the dark blue around the bottom of my front door. It's saying it's under eight degrees, which really isn't good. And it's even worse at the back door, where the coldest areas around the bottom are under five degrees. Heat is also being quickly lost through the glass on both the door and the window. I've also got a radiator on an external wall with a sofa in front of it, so heat is being lost right away. One of the quickest, easiest, and cheapest ways to reduce heat loss is by using a draft excluder. You can get one for around 10 to 15 pounds or make one yourself totally for free out of fabric scraps. If you're like me and you need to stop heat being lost from around your door frames, you can pick up some door frame insulation for around 15 pounds. I couldn't quite believe how easy it was to use. First, I measured the gap that needed to be filled around my door frame. There are lots of different options and sizes, so make sure you order the one that's right for you. It's then super easy to stick it around your door frame and cut off any excess. I did both my front door and back door for maximum heat retention. Although the back door glass is supposed to be double glazed, I still wanted to reduce heat loss. So I got a window film insulation kit that acts as a barrier keeping warm air in and cold air out. It was surprisingly easy to install too, and so satisfying getting rid of the creases with the hairdryer. Any radiators that are on external walls are at risk of losing heat extra quick. And because my sofa's in front of it too, it's twice as bad. So I picked up some radiator reflector panels that slot behind the radiator and keep more heat in. Again, it was so easy to install. All you need to do is measure up the radiator and cut it to size. You also cut slits into the reflector so you can easily slot it into place. And you barely even notice it behind there. You can even make your own radiator reflector using tin foil, which is even more cost effective. Now, you're probably wondering, did my efforts make a difference? Before we crunch the numbers, I just want to note that every house will be different and there are lots of variables and loads of different ways to show these kind of results. So I've tried my best to keep it fair and transferable. Using the door insulation strips and a draft excluder on my front door has massively reduced the through draft, as you can easily see that it's kept so much warmer by looking at the scale on the right. Using the door insulation strips and the window film insulation kit on my back door has seemed to reduce heat loss around the door frame as well as the glass, which is great. Now, it's quite hard to measure the impact of the radiator reflector panel, but it's noticeably more cozy and warm in my living room when the heating is on, especially when I'm sat on the sofa, which is so lovely. And as I couldn't control the weather or temperature outside, I've worked out the average heat loss from my living room before the heat proofing and after using the smart thermostat data. Taking an average of these means that before heat proofing my home, the temperature was dropping by about 24% or 4.5 degrees. After heat proofing, taking an average means that the temperature was dropping by about 16.7% or 2.8 degrees. Now, if I could turn my evening heating on one hour later than usual during the cold months, say from October to March, thanks to the heat loss being a lot less now, I'd save myself around 133 pounds before the cost of the kit. So overall, I'm really happy with the results. Everything was easy to install and it seems to be effective at keeping the warm in and the cold out.